Okay. Oh, what? That's crazy, dude. And without fire, though. Rally to me. <laughs> Welcome to the famous map Forts of Eisen. It's gonna be a video commentary for Battle for Middle Earth 1 between Rohan and Mordor. So it's definitely a favorable matchup for the Rohan faction because Rohan is able to counter the Mordor faction at almost every single stage of the game. Early game with the peasant spam, mid game with the cheap stable in Rohirrim, and later on with the Rohirrim archers who have like they have like crazy kite potential. They can hit and run, and your trolls when you are playing Mordor against Rohan can never ever reach out to the Rohirrim archers and the second you stop you know chasing them they can stop and attack you once again and they can do that all day long in order to get the most out of the faction of Rohan you need to make sure to spam lots of peasants at the beginning of the game that's kind of crucial when it comes to get advantage and Mordor is an infinite skilling faction late game is going to be kind of rough for Rohan because when it comes to sieging they are kind of struggling a lot and Mordor could eventually get the chance to camp it out, you know what I'm saying? Mordor can recruit two Nazgûls and the Witch King, which will be quite helpful to get the map control. And then with Catapults and Trolls, you can kinda camp it out until you get power points enough to summon the Balrog. Okay, so it's a very interesting push with only one Peasant and Meriora Brandybuck. This is not gonna achieve too much. Yes, the Peasants are stronger than Oryx in a 1 on 1 situation, but it's a 2v1 situation. And for that reason, the Rohan player is disengaging. And it looks like he doesn't want to spam any additional peasants either, you know? He want to go for the early stable, which is not the worst thing in the world, but I think if you can get a little bit more peasants on the field, your early game is going to be significantly stronger. Because as we are talking, Mordor didn't receive any economical damage, which is pretty good for Mordor. And he can legit skill free for the mid game, you know? The build order is going to be um, Furnace, Orc Pit and Haradrim Palace. I personally like this a lot because it gives you kind of the option to effectively fight for the map control. If you go for the troll cage, troll cage is a very expensive building and you will have to sit in your base and wait for the trolls to come out. In the second, there is a Legolas on the field or Aragorn on the field or Rohir Majs on the field. You need to kind of bail to your fortress, to your castle, and you can only camp. But with the Haradrims, you can kind of try to capture the outpost, you know, put a little bit more pressure on the minimap with your uh, soldiers of rune as the pikemen to counter the rohirrim and kind of try to buy yourself a time to get your nazgul early game and then witch king lead game on the field the golem is quite tanky in this game by the way as you can see he's tanking all these peasants they are hitting him from multiple sides at the same time but he's smeagol the wielder of the one rank for a for a long time actually he was actually kind of, i don't know guys do you guys know how many years Gollum got the chance to keep the one ring under his control. I don't exactly know how many years it was, but it was a long time. Because Bilbo was kind of young when he was, um, you know, like, I don't know how much time passed between um, Gollum finding the one ring with his cousin and then Bilbo stealing it away from him. And also Bilbo got the chance to keep the ring for a long time, actually. And also kind of a huge shout out to Bilbo Baggins because he got the ring for a long time under his control but yet he didn't turn into a secondary golem, you know what I'm saying. The Hobbit was able to clean this up, he's almost level 3. This mirror has been taken down by the Rohirrim, it was an early stable start into the first Rohirrim, into the second Rohirrim right after to protect this. In the meantime Mordor was able to creep this with the Haradrims and he's now moving forward to creep the Aralea at the bottom left side. Again, it's kind of very hard for Mordor to keep map control. Orcs, yes, they are for free, but they have no chance against Rohirrim, not even, not even against peasants. So until you get eventually runes or your Nazgûs or trolls on the field, it's going to be close to impossible to get any of your settlements protected for a longer duration. Which means Mordor will need industry. That's very important. But he was able to capture the outpost, he's gonna be also able to creep this uncontested. And what you can do is build the orc pit here and start spamming additional orcs. The good thing about the orcs is besides putting pressure on the minimap, they also generate you power points. Because as you lose them, you start gaining more and more power points. With two orc pits under your control, you would actually start losing lots of orcs throughout the entire game. And then you can get lots of power points collected as well. You know, very important for Mordor to get to Darkness, Industry and later on to Balrog as well.
I mean, this is not gonna achieve too much, I believe. Um, Rohan player is going for the full beast. He actually demolished the steeple. Um, I'm not a big fan of that, to be honest, because he didn't even purchase the horseman shields. You know, that's like a big no-no. When you get... I mean, I think he has like four Rohirrim on the field, right? I see one, two, three... Um, okay, he has three on the field. So still, you know, you can get two more on the field, and then you have like five for the steeple to be level two. Then you can buy horseman shield. After you do that, you can still demolish the uh, steeple. Because later on, you might need it, and then you will have to build the steeple again and recruit five Rohirrim again to get it to level two. You know what I mean? But here's the full map control as expected. It looks like you want to rush, rush eventually Aragorn, which was like a solid strategy back in the day. Aragorn was the one man army. Nobody could ever kill him. You know, he was too tanky. He was able to be sent alone into the Mordor castle. Even Boromir saying, one does not simply walk into Mordor, but Aragorn is like, yeah, are you sure about that, brother? You know what I'm saying? Okay, outpost control, that's good. Um, but as you can see, he can't get any map control. In the meantime, Hobbit was able to creep this. That's pretty good. We have runes on the field. Hobbit should be trying to get the money before the runes are able to steal it. Um, Money-wise, it's looking pretty good for Rohan. He's actually having Aragorn on the way. That's kind of crazy. Mordor is pressuring the minimap. And the money... Oh no. You are thieves, as Gollum would like to say. Okay, as you can see, there is Aragorn with the Jedi sword, the blue sword, which makes him pretty much to the best hero in the game. Like, look at this insane amount of boost you get. You get 100% damage leadership, a uh, damage buff, 50% armor buff, and also 25% speed. Like, again, I keep saying it all the time. Normally, there is like a um, middle ground. Basically, a hero is either dealing lots of damage and being squishy, or he's being tanky and doesn't deal too much damage. And Aragorn is the exception to the rule. He's dealing way too much damage while being way too tanky too. I would say he's potentially the, the strongest hero when it comes to perma DPS. Nobody can match his strength. And also the tankiness. I don't think any hero, not even Gimli, can be as tanky as this dude. And you can... You see? Like, the, I've seen one thing. Let me check. Yeah, you see? He's spam clicking the right click button on the, on the, on the furnace, which makes him to cancel the auto animation, which was a bug in the patch 1.06. Of course, it's, it's fixed for the patch 2.22, but earlier, when you would spam right-clicking on a building hero or unit, you could kind of make Aragorn attack twice as fast, you know what I'm saying? Twice as quickly. So your DPS would be going up dramatically, which was kind of nutty. Okay, but in the meantime, Mordor is actually taking over the map. That's pretty good. The Legolas is on the field, who is going to be a great hero to counter those runes. They are very weak against heroes, as you can see. Like, Legolas is legit two-shotting them. 3-shotting them, because he's only level 1, but he's gonna get stronger and stronger and stronger. Aragorn in the meantime, and that's that's the scenario, you know, I want to talk about. There is not a single hero beside Balrog, we can, you know, obviously Balrog is not a hero you can recruit from the from the Citadel. There is not a single hero you can recruit in the game who is able to do that. You see, he's sent alone into the Mordor. Boromir was wrong. One does simply walk into Mordor, he's gonna use the Bleedmaster, he has sustain with the Attilas, he can heal himself up. And also when this is not enough, he has to heal from the Spellbook of Rohan too. So basically, infinite sustain, super tanky with the Blade Master and Anduril combination. He has 100% more armor and 150% more damage. Yeah, you are fine, Aragorn. Click the one button and you are just set in stone, you know? And he can keep doing this all day long. Mordor has lots of money, but he can't use the money to recruit the Nazgul. Because there is no Citadel, and without the Citadel, you can't use the money. He has no Troll Cage, and without the Nazgul, he has legit zero answer to this legendary Swordman of the Rohan faction, who is, ironically, the King of Gondor. Orcs are chasing him down, but he's gonna ignore them fully. He's just focusing on the buildings. He's gonna now commit once again in, into the middle and make sure to destroy the Citadel. And Mordor is gonna eventually recruit the Nazgul, but I don't think he will make it out anytime soon. Yeah, it's gonna be destroyed way before that. Hold on a sec. Nah, never mind. He has actually the outpost at the bottom left side. The good thing is though, let's take a look into the minimap, okay? Look at the minimap on your screen at the bottom left side. The map is looking yellow to me, boys. Like, legit, there is only one single farm left for the Rohan faction. So it's like a coin flip situation. Rohan is fully committing into the castle. 
And in the meantime, completely ignoring the, the minimap. So Mordor is losing, of course, a lot. In the meantime, he's going to lose eventually his full castle, but he's going to have eventually enough money to buy it back again. Because map control is everything. Legolas, in the meantime, is tanking the towers. Heal is on cooldown. And also Attilas is on cooldown. The Nazgul is coming out and the outpost should be protected. Yeah, look, the Horohirama are going to be killed. He has the stable once again under his control, but he's kind of poor. The reason why he's... I mean, he's not poor, but he actually needs lots of money. He has 4,000 in the bank, but he needs to build for 1,300 the armory. He needs to buy for 1,000 heavy armor, 800 the forge plates, 600 the banner, very important, against the screech of the Nazgul. He also needs fire arrows. Like, he needs so much stuff that 4,000 resources all alone is not going to be enough. I mean, where is Eowyn when we need it? Ah, there she is. Okay, Eowyn. Hmm. I mean, a Rohan player is actually forced to build a tower. It's very important, otherwise he will be losing this. Rohan has like zero defense inside the castle. That means you can send your flying heroes like Nazgul and Witch King just inside the, inside the castle like he does and force him to spend more than 800 for his two towers. 1600 in total for the defense. And he will still be able to destroy it. That's crazy. In the meantime, Aragorn is still in the castle. Can you imagine that? That's kind of nutty, right? Okay, he's going to be able to destroy this once again. I mean, Aragorn is such a crazy strong hero, dude. That's unbelievable. Oh, orcs are coming. Okay. Uh, small and little gate rush action is happening. Actually, very smart move from the Mora player. You know, dealing economical damage is key to victory because he knows now that Rohan has legit zero farms outside. It means the only money Rohan is making is from the base here. And him losing this level 2 farms is not replaceable. Aragorn in the meantime is going to be able to destroy the castle fully. But look at the money from Mordor. You know, he's not poor by all means. He will have so much money very, very soon. And Rohan has actually zero units on the field. Look at his command points. He has 10 out of 200 command points. He has only Aragorn and Legolas. They used to cost 5 command points each in the patch 1.06. And that's it. And also Eowyn. That's all he got. Now the question is, are the three Rohan heroes, Legolas, the Prince of the Mikwood Elves, Aragorn, the King of Gondor, and Eowyn, the Shield Maiden of Rohan, are they gonna be enough to save the day? That's the question. I mean, Rohan was able to buy this, but the problem is he's so poor that he can't even buy the tower. You know, for 800. He's too poor. He has, again, zero farms outside. The Eowyn is, of, co of course, a great counter, but Smite is on cooldown. You can't use it every single time. The Nazgul is already in a, in a healthy spot. You need Legolas to be here. But, of course, nothing and nobody can match with the mobility from a Nazgul. Nazgul can engage and disengage whenever he wants to, and you cannot catch to him. He couldn't or she couldn't use the smite and Nazgul is going to get in safety and I believe Mordor has so much money. He's going to go for the second Nazgul already. What is this game, man? Look at the Rohan castle. Like on the, on the people, it looks great for Rohan, right? Because he has two castles. He destroyed the Mordor castle fully. He was able to claim it for himself. On the people, it looks amazing, <laughs> you know, for, for Rohan. But actually, I don't think it does. Because now he needs to deal with two Nazgûls, but he has only one Eowyn and one Legolas. And that's all he got. He's poor, he can't generate any money, and Mordor went for the devastation. He has already 5,000 in the bank after the second Nazgûl, and very, very soon he will be able to recruit the leader of the nine. The Witch King of Engmar. Okay, I mean, he's gonna... Oh, okay, that's why you don't right click on it. Like, right-clicking in this game is not very smart. Because, you know, there is a chance <laughs> that Legolas is going to use it on Lumber Mill Workers, for example. You know what I'm saying? You want to manually click on the target you want to aim, aim for, you know? I mean, the problem is Rohan is kind of out of the game. That's the problem. He's actually investing the money into the farms. He needs money more than anything else. But you can't make as much money as Mordor can. Double outpost. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
seven each settlements. Every single one of them is being controlled by Mordor. He has the full wood bonus, of course, for 30%. He's also building slaughterhouses. Slaughterhouses are also very good resource buildings outside. If you have no trees around the settlement, then the slaughterhouse is going to be, of course, more efficient. But if you have trees around, the lumber mill is always a better choice because it's cheaper, first of all, to build up. And second thing is, with the additional workers, you can make definitely more money in compared to, for example, a slaughterhouse. Eowyn, use the smite, okay? Okay, Legolas, nice. One Nazgul is down, the other Nazgul is gonna keep attacking Legolas now. Does he have heal? Yeah, he had heal, actually. He didn't want to use it for Eowyn. Atelas is gonna be used, and I think the Nazgul is gonna be forced to disengage. What is the Nazgul doing? That's a throw if I've ever seen one. Trading one Eowyn in Atelas for your two Nazguls. I mean, I get it. Reviving the Nazguls is for free, so he will eventually be able to get them back on the field. But it's gonna take you a long time to get them back. And good thing is that he will have eventually Witch King, yeah. And he's going for the Mooma Kill Pan too. Okay, I, to be honest, I like that. Because unlike the Troll Cage, Mooma Kills, they don't need... You don't need to have four of them to be to become strong. The Trolls... The problem with the Trolls is without Drummer Troll leadership, they are kind of weak. And Aragorn will one-shot them. Legolas can two-shot them. But Mooma Kills are a different story. One of the best counters to heroes because even Aragorn, who is one of the tankiest, if not the tankiest hero of all time, will get one-shotted by the moment kill. The Screech to mess them up, but even Witch King is getting bullied by Legolas actually. Legolas is getting stronger and stronger, and the Arrowwind is going to be a massive power spike. Because if you can land Arrowwind on Witch King solo, you can one-shot them from 100 to 0. He's gonna build Archer range. It's a bad spot. Like when it comes to build production buildings, like stable, archery range, I would always recommend to build them inside the castle with a better protection. Outpost, in terms of defensive capabilities, of course, is no match to a castle or to a camp. Okay, but he needs his Eowyn back. That's very important. Witch King is gonna be annoying. He has only one tower. But he has lots of farms though. He's gonna make now like seven farms here. He has but also six farms here. He has 13 farms under his control, which is pretty good. So in long terms, he will gonna he is gonna make more money. But keep in mind that every single one of these farms is only level one. You know, you get like 15 resources per tick, which is, you know, not very really high at this point of the game. Okay. Oh, what? What happened? Yeah, that's what I was trying to see, boys. <laughs> You see, the one-man army Aragorn doesn't stand a chance against the mighty Mumu kill, The legendary Haradrim beast from the east. But Legolas, just like in the films, taking care of the Mumu kill, no problem. But Aragorn, dude, that's such a big L for Rohan, that's unbelievable. Like, that's the win condition of you, right? That's the one hero you, you should be grateful about to have. Because, because of him, you was able to destroy the castle. Because of him, you are kind of semi in a, in, a, in a winning situation. The second moment kill is coming on the field. But Legolas is shooting him. And Legolas is fast. You know, he has like a fancy footwork. He can kite him all day long. So you should be able to dodge the incoming charge attack. Because you are, you know, kind of very mobile. And the second you kind of get a bit more distance from the moment kill, you can turn and shoot. Like he does, for example. Micro him around. And whenever he comes close, you just move. And then you do that over and over again. He's now almost gonna be level 7 after killing this Mumakil, I believe. Let me check. I mean, Rohan has a lot of money, but he's not even reviving his Aragorn nor his Eowyn. Legolas killed the Mumakil, get level 7. It's a huge power spike. He has also healed from the Spearbok, just for the worst case scenario. But keep in mind, please, that he needs a lot of stuff. He needs Theorin, he needs Eowyn, he needs Armory, he needs Stable, he needs a Fire Row from the Archer range. That all of that is needed. Okay, he's gonna go for another Mumma kill. Mordor has actually so much money. But because he has only Haradrim Palace and Mumma kill, it's hard for him to invest the money into something. The two Nazgus are gonna be back on the menu very, very soon. And with that, he will have three flying creatures who can even bully Legolas. Legolas can only shoot one of them at the same time. So three of them permanently attacking Legolas, and Legolas is gonna be killed. 100%. And that's gonna, that's gonna be the plan. He's gonna use Arrowwind. As you can see, it's chunking, chunking, chunking. The Nazgul is gonna be sent into Abyss the second he joins the battlefield. Now, it's a very awkward situation because if he stops, Mumakil is gonna kill him. Nah. Does he have no heal? Oh, he healed, but I think he missed the healing. 
and he, ironically he actually got killed by the Haradrims on top of the Mumma kill. Not the Witch King killed him, not the Mumma kill killed him, actually the Haradrims killed him. <laughs> Don't underestimate them, because they also deal 50% more damage as Witch King was nearby. 5 power points in the bank and it looks like Ro uh, Mordor is not gonna stop here. He wanna use the cooldown window of Legolas being dead and now pressuring the secondary castle of the Rohan player Ringle. So it's gonna make ring ring, <laughs> I had to make the joke. Aragorn is gonna be back on the menu very soon, Legolas is being revived, but again, even after such a long time, he has barely any units on the field. He actually recruited only one single Yeoman Archer from the outpost. That's the reason why it's not level 2. Without Fire Arrow, they don't deal too much damage, and with no, with no damage output, the Witch King or Nazgul's, they can fully commit, just like they did. Aragorn is back, he went for the Armory. I mean, Eowyn is a massive hero, and you can't be lazy or too greedy to not invest 540 for one of the most powerful heroes against the Nazgul's and Witch King. She is needed, desperately. You need her, you know? He's gonna finally get her on the field, but it should be done way before. But you can see, even though Rohan is making mistakes over mistakes over mistakes, but it's still a very tough matchup for the Mordor faction. I'm telling you one thing, in the patch 1.06, if the players would be equally skill leveled, there would be like 0% chance of Rohan losing against Mordor on this map. Like again, the matchup also kind of depending on the map you are playing it on. So basically, if you are playing on Forts of Eisen, which is like a um, quite small map, Mordor is very weak against Rohan. But if you play on a map like Westfold or Fangon Forest with like a bunch of settlements around so you can get to mid to leave King Power Spike way, way sooner, it's a different story. But it's also favoring Rohan faction. That's why, I mean, <laughs> like, how can I say? If you are looking to start to play a faction and you want to be good with the faction, I would recommend you to play Rohan because Rohan has legit not a bad matchup. Like, there is not a single matchup Rohan can't win and dominate. Darkness for more tankiness. Eowyn is being behind. Aragorn has to be careful because we have seen what happens if Aragorn doesn't pay attention for a single second. Int allies will be special summoned. The base is safe, but the Mumakil is gonna attack it very soon. The Mumakil is too tanky. So the tower will need ages. That's crazy, dude. We have Ains against Mumma kill situation. He healed them because they got almost one shot from the charge attack. Aragorn is running for his life. Why are you running? Why are you running? Elvin, use your thing. What is this fiesta? The Ains are so small in terms of the Mumma kill in, in compared to the Mumma kills in Aragorn. Never mind, he's actually in a safe spot. Run, run, the king of Gondor. You can be the king of all countries you want, but look at the size. And when somebody tells me size doesn't matter everything, I would say, shut up, I don't believe you. <laughs> the ends, these look like, like, like little babies in compared to the Mumu kills, you know? Oh, actually, did you guys see the punch from the end against the Mumu kill? Please keep in mind that they have even darkness leadership, you know? And the end chunked them, dude. Where is the Witch King at? In the meantime, the ca castle is being breached. Look, <laughs> he's gonna go inside the jeans now. The Witch King is sporting with additional damage leadership, the Haradrims are shooting on the farm and Mumakil is not only a, a monster that can wipe out armies and heroes, but also a siege weapon who can hit both the parts of the wall at the same time. Now three parts of the wall has been broken and to repair them you need to invest 2000 each. And when we take a look into the money from Rohan we can see that's far from happening, you know? I mean, his towers, now three of them are gonna shoot the Mumma kill all the time, but you can see, the Mumma kill is being quite tanky against anything but fire arrows. And because the Rohan player lost the archery range without getting it to level 2, he's far away from getting to the point in which he can finally buy fire arrow. And yeah, your Legolas can kill them eventually, but it will take you so much time. Look how long time it takes for the Rohirrim archer to kill them. And remember, he lost Legolas. He doesn't even have money for reviving Aragorn, can you imagine that? He needs like... More, you know, like he's so down. He's gonna have the money finally now. And we have 8 power points in the bank. It looks like the Mumma kill is gonna be taken down and the thief at the castle is going to be in a safe spot, at least for now. But the question is, for how long? Because we have 3 more Mumma kills rotating from the bottom side. The Haradrims are going to war. And unlike in the films, we have a Rohan versus Mordor situation. 
I'm actually curious what would happen if Isengard would siege Gondor in the films and Mordor would siege Rohan. Like, think about the film The Lord of the Rings and the Two Towers, you know? The scene when Isengard was marching to Rohan and then Rohan was able to defend himself with the Eoma army arriving. But the reason why it was successful is because the Uruks, they would be kind of handicapped against the Rohirrim. But imagine Muma kills. Imagine you see Muma kills marching to Helm's Deep and Gondor not being around to help with the, with the archers or trebuchet. And of course, by the time Aragorn had also no access to the army of the dead. I think the Muma kills all alone would be such a big problem. It would be just too tanky. <laughs> and even trolls all alone could be causing so much problems because imagine this Rohirrim army fighting against five trolls. How do you want to deal with that? That's the big question. I mean, he's shooting, but again, no fire arrow means little to no damage. The main damage dealer is definitely Legolas. He's finally able to kill the Muma kill. The map is still looking yellow to me. Mordor has absolute dominance in the game between Rohan and Mordor. He's finally, for the first time, I mean, actually not. He actually lost Theodin already one time. Looks like revived Theodin means that he lost him. Nine power points in the bank. Darkness is going to be available for the next big fights. And you can see the Haradrims are kind of bullying them too. But again, you know, Legolas dealing perma damage all the time. The Nazgul and the Witch King are saying, stop, Legolas, the Prince of the Midwood Elves. And once again, he lag. I think he's clearly underestimating, like he's host also, by the way, from this game. Like he's hosting this game. But he's clearly underestimating damage output from the Haradrims. Like with the Eye of Sauron and Witch King plus Darkness. So they would deal. Let's calculate, shall we? <laughs> Math is fun. So 33% uh, damage from this. 50 from the eye and 50 from the witch king so quick math that's 133 percent more damage leadership on the haradrims in the perma shoot your legolas and that's the second time he actually lost them which he did he lose aragon again what killed aragon again but this moment kill killed aragon because he's the he's level four <laughs> dude I, I, you know that's the thing like normally when Aragorn is on the field you don't need to check him every single second because there is almost nothing that can kill him that fast but this is an exception to the rule oh man the shield me that off for one you smite okay sh it's on cooldown look at the fiesta dude two Muma kills three Nazgul's are flying inside the jeans and that's what's gonna happen if Mordor would be fighting against Rohan in the films it's unbelievable here then is on the field rally to me rally to me Okay, let's talk the let's make the legendary speech of Theodin King in the films. Right now, right for ruin in the world's ending. Death! Let's motivate them a little bit because I don't want this game to end yet. It's actually kind of fiesta. The castle is gonna be now fully destroyed, by the way, from Hydro. Uh, from Ringel, sorry, by Hydro. And Mordor has more than enough money to buy the castle. Imagine the situation, and that's a thing we don't get the chance to see very often. Like, how many times do we see somebody losing a castle at pretty much the early game and then still managing to get back into the game and win the game? That doesn't happen too much. And I think that should be like the perfect proof that map control is literally everything. Because if we gotta be honest, the only thing that kept Mordor alive was the fact that he was getting the full map control, enough money to not only recruit the second Nazgul and the Witch King, but also go for the Mumakil army. To be able to buy the full castle, building two troll cage, and all of that stuff. At pretty much the second you you purchase the camp, you know, castle, you know what I'm saying? You, that's the proof. That's why I'm annoying you always with the statement, map control is <laughs> everything. But I think that this game, this video, should be the perfect proof for the statement. And Rohan is being poor, like really, really poor. Far away from getting to the point in which he can finally revive Aragorn, who got, I believe, killed three times by the Mumma kill. This is the Mumma kill leader. This is the mean one. Look at him. Look at this red things around him, around his face. He's looking very serious to me. Like he is roaring. You know what I'm saying? Look, what is this army, dude? One, two, three, four, five Mumma kills. That's kind of busted. Yeah, two more here like pretty much all this population right now is invested into the Mumokias. we also nerfed them in the in the patch 2.22 2 
because they cost only 30 command points, you know, which is like really low for them. He deletes the steeple again. Like, I don't want to see Ringel play the bet, um, but I think he couldn't play it any worse. It's a winning and favorable matchup for Rohan, and I think he made major mistakes. Like, you can see the matchup is kind of forgiving when you are making small mistakes, and you having the upper hand with Rohan faction is the counter faction to the Mordor. You can still turn the game around, but if you make the same mistake repeatedly, you know, you repeat the same mistake over and over again, of course, at some point of the game you will lose. And the major mistake was, of course, to not care about the map control. The other, re the other mistake was to lose Aragorn over and over again. That's more than 10,000 here to invest and reinvest into the Aragorn. The same also goes to Legolas being too greedy with the heal. Like, those mistakes will lead you into this situation in which you will find yourself in a spot where your castle is being surrounded by not one, by not two, by not three, by not four, but by five Moomer kills. Five of them. And without fire arrow, rally to me. <laughs> ah, that's so funny, dude. Oh, the Moomer kill is stepping on you. You know, like, do you guys know the, the thing between, you know, Amber Hart, Amber Hart and, and Johnny Depp? My dog step on a bee. <laughs> my Theodin, uh, my Mumma kill step on Theodin. That's like a new meme now, okay? Let's make now a new meme. You know, when Ember Hart was saying, you know, my dog step on a bee, we are gonna say, my Mumma kill step on Theodin, you know? Dude, that's such a fiesta game. You see, that's what I like to see, you know? Like, oh, Arrow Wind. You see, almost soloed the Witch King, but I think Legolas in the meantime got killed. Too many Haradrims. Looks like the mission. Will be oh the ends are going to war it is likely that they are going to their tomb indeed oh my holy they are kicking his butt my man what is this look at this end suit the mighty creatures of the fangorn forest dude how epic would that be actually we have never gotten the chance to see some units against other units and i think that's one of the fights i would love to see the ends they seem to be extremely powerful in the films and so are the moomer gears and I'm wondering what would happen in the films, not in the game, but in the, in the films if, for example, a Moomer kill fight against the end. Guys, what do you think about that? In the films, not in the game, let me know. Who wins in a one-on-one? -on -one, end or Moomer kill? The last building falls, the map is looking yellow to me, and that's gonna be the end of the Rohan faction. That's gonna be the end of Ringel, who has been defeated, and that's going to be the victory of the Mordor faction, as Kofmark would like to see. The age of man is over. The time. Of the orc has come thank you guys so much for watching if you was enjoying this please make sure to leave a like on this video subscribe for more videos like this in the future i will see you next time until then keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out boys